Well, May marks Mental Health Awareness Month, a time to talk about the stigma surrounding mental health. Yeah, and keeping that in mind, Dr. Sarah Getz from the Kansas City University is here, and she's going to join us once a week with a different topic. And so this week, what are we going to kick off with, Dr. Getz? Well, I'm hoping that every topic really focuses on connectedness, and okay. today I want to talk about connectedness at work. Okay. Right, so uh, connectedness at work is really important. So during the pandemic, our whole lives shifted and changed. Many of us are now working from home. You were just mentioning a friend that works from yeah. home. And so our relationships have changed at work too. And that can be really problematic when we aren't getting that positive reinforcement from those connections that we have at work. So if we look at decades and decades of research, it all tells us that us feeling seen and heard is extremely important to our ability to thrive. And we want everyone to thrive. Yeah, we've heard, we hear this all the time from people, you know, at other jobs and other professions. They say, I don't have friends at work. I go to work, I do my job, and I go home. Talk about why it's so important to have some sort of relationship with people at work. So maybe that works really well for some people, but the bottom line is that individuals who have warm connections at work, they live longer, they mm. live healthier, mm. and they're more productive, and they're less likely to leave work. And those are all really good things. Yeah. Um, so what else do we need to know about workplace relationships that can help us uh, battle the stigma? I think that having a genuine, authentic curiosity about people and saying, you know, tell me more, or I noticed this, or checking in with individuals, that's a great way to start to build those connections. And then when we have the opportunity for connections, we feel happier at our workplace. Yeah. Is there something, how should people handle when there is some sort of issue with someone at work? Because you do want to have those connections. So that's the most important thing about having connections. If we've built good connections and relationships with people, when something goes wrong, we can have that conversation. But if we don't have friends at work and then something happens, guess what? That feedback is never going to land. Not yeah. in a million years. And <laughs> so a lot of people are still working remotely. What about them? Well, so we could mix it up, you know, maybe you're full-time remote, but you have the opportunity to drop in once a month, once a week. That's going to give you that dose of connectedness yeah. that you're really missing, that you're feeling. So maybe mix it up that way or set up a happy hour. You know, those are always a good time. Mm -hmm. And so there are other ways that we can think about trying to rebuild those connections at work. And it's about stepping outside of your comfort zone, maybe, and getting back into a connected routine. Yeah, and just in general, when we talk about work, it's a big part of our lives. We spend most of our time at work, and I know, does that help our mental health, connecting with someone at work? Because, you know, that affects your mental health. So one of the basic pieces of being human is our desire to be connected and to feel seen and heard. And even in those incidental moments at work where you're running into somebody in the hallway and they're, you know, connecting with you, even for a second, you feel that. And yeah. so that's the positivity. So we get all of this from our regular relationships too, you know, right. at home and our romantic relationships. But those interactions at work can be really important. I'm, I'm wondering, how would you approach someone if you, if you feel there might be, they might be having an off day, they may not be, and you want to, and you want to check on them, you want to reach out, but you're not sure how, you don't want to be too invasive, you want to be respectful and mindful. How do you make that approach? You know, I usually slow way down slow down, okay. I look them in the eye, and I say, are you okay? Or sometimes I say, you don't seem like yourself today. But I slow down to let them know that I'm asking because I want to hear the answer, not because I'm just asking. And we get in that habit sometimes of just saying, how are you? Good, good, okay, good, and everybody goes right. along their way. But if you slow down and you know, maybe put your hand on their arm and say, hey, are you okay? What's going on? And give them the opportunity to respond, that can be really powerful. Mm, yeah. That's a great idea. I love that we started with work. Yeah. Because <laughs> we spent a lot of time at work. work so yes. true. Great topic. Yes. It's true. Thank you, Dr. Kess. Yes, no yeah. problem. Thanks for having me. <laughs> we'll awesome. see you next week. Yes. <laughs> All right.